National Football League, presented by EA Sports. Today, we're set for a good AFC matchup between the Cleveland Browns and the Houston Texans. Takes it at the seven. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Now after the play, it looks like there's a Texan here slow to get up. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. First carry now for Kareem Hunt. He'll get a yard, that's all, as they get him down at the 28. That felt like a trap, because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carry before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Now it's Watson. And this is incomplete. The defender certainly didn't forget about him leaking out of the backfield. There's a guy ready and waiting to pick him up in coverage. And that throw, no shot. So trouble already here on their opening drive. This is third and nine. Here's Watson. Looking deep in the direction of Cooper. That's incomplete, but there is a flag down. So hang on, a big call coming on third down. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it, brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. On fourth down, on is Corey Bohorquez to punt. Desmond King back deep. This is taken at the 18. It'll go as a 50-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Texans will take over. And now out comes Houston. Now the rookie fourth-round pick. This is Damian Pierce. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking. And that's from the offensive lineman creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Four yards the pick up, first down. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. Allen. And his throw is incomplete. I know tight ends love this route because a lot of times they'll fake a block first and get a little bit of space and then come across the middle because in their mind, they're thinking catch the ball and then drop the hammer on the little guys in the secondary. Unable to drop the hammer, he just dropped the pass. To throw again on second down, Allen. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds five yards now it's third and five they should have got more out of that though he was wide open i love how emphatic you are with that call because that's exactly what i was thinking wide open in the flat give him a ball that he can use to get up field with not just catch and go over the sideline they cost themselves some yardage there allen gonna throw buying time to his left and he will not be able to hang on through the contact it's incomplete the coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Well, anytime he reads man coverage, I don't think it's going to be the only time he'll try and hit that route to the outside in this game. He'll test the perimeter, but that time, they were up to the challenge. 
Now on fourth down, it's Cameron Johnston on to punt it away. Taking it about the 16. We call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Browns will take over first and 10. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. They'll run with Hunt on second down. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. It's a gain of 10, and the Browns are going to get a first down. Well, there's plenty of real estate for him to maneuver on that run, and let's face it, it shouldn't be a surprise. He's one of the better backs in the league. Had to come into this game with the idea, slow him down. Otherwise, it's going to be a long afternoon. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. Jalen Petrie coming up to bring him down. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're a back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. They'll try the air now with Watson. His throw incomplete. They certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send him back to the drawing board. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. From the gun, here's Watson. Only able to get back a yard for his efforts, and that leads us to fourth down. And partner, I would guess that in his headset, he was hearing from his coach, it's third down, don't take a sack. And in this case, he's able to avoid the pressure and get out of there. He doesn't get the first down, but he does turn a possible loss into positive yardage. On fourth down, on is Corey Bohorquez to punt. And that'll hit at the five and go into the end zone for a touchback. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. The last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and ten. Allen now on first down. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. And he'll be corralled well upfield right around the 40-yard line. Just like that, a pickup of 20 on their first play from scrimmage. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. On the jet sweep, here comes Moore. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. But defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. From the 45 on second down, Allen to the sideline. Wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. They follow up the gain of five by only getting one there on second down. Yeah, that one was covered pretty well because they were trying to leak the tight end out into the flat. I think they were hoping he could catch and turn up field and pick up the first down. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Here's Allen. And yeah, that will be incomplete. I think the punter might start to get into a pretty good rhythm here if he keeps getting opportunities. 
but that's the last thing his team wants to have happen, right? The last thing you want to see is your punter feeling pretty good because he's out there all the time. Yeah, first quarter only, but they're 0 for 2 on third down conversions to start this thing. On fourth down, out is the punter Cameron Johnston to boot it away. Oh, this is off the side of his foot. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. And now the Browns coming out on the field. And partner, I know so far, I mean, we're still in the first half, but you love this game as a defensive guy. Zero to zero. We'll see if the offense can get going on this drive. Well, you know how they talk about music to your ears? How about what it does for your eyes when you watch something like this, right, where these teams are locked in and going at it, no points going up on the scoreboard. I'm loving it. You're exactly right. Well, switch over, though, to an offensive mindset for a moment. What do they need to do here to get on track and get some points? Well, I think a couple of ways. Number one, you pull out something maybe they haven't seen before. Coaches always talk about unscouted looks. Maybe you give them something that they haven't seen on tape, and now you shock them that way. The second, run your basic playbook, but run it so well that you give your skill position guys a chance to make big plays individually. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Watson. And there is Amari Cooper, his first catch. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. So finally completes his first pass. Credit the defense, though. They've been showing him some different looks, keeping him off balance. Yeah, I like, it. I like the observation that you had there because... When you give him different looks and give any quarterback different looks, it takes just a little bit longer to process sometimes, and you don't throw the ball with the same confidence. You're not sure that that's where you should go with the football, and that's worked for the defense early in this game, and now he's got his first completion. Let's see if his confidence comes back, and he starts to get into a nice little groove. So the completion results there in nine yards, and that'll give him a short yardage situation here for second down. And Chubble try the middle here. And he gets it down to the 32. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. To throw is Watson. zone before he crosses over out of bounds. A nice job there on the escape and scramble. A first down, a 16-yard gain. Give him a little extra credit there. His head was cool as the play broke down. Didn't force a throw, and in the end, got to show off his athleticism with a nice gain to bring up a new set of downs. From the red zone now, Watson completes it right side to Cooper. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. And I think this is a route we'll see more of as this game goes on because with his speed, they want to get him the ball in space on drag routes just like this. They want him to get the ball and run after the catch. Good job there, though, holding him for a short game. They go with Chubb on second down. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. No score after one on EA Sports. The start of the second quarter, and it's the Browns in control of the football. Ninth play coming up here on this drive. This is third and a yard. Back to throw, Watson. And he'll just get rid of it. And based on my math, they've only converted one time thus far in this game, so you can see the frustration starting to come out a little bit. Third downs, they've been a problem for them all game. They've got to start becoming solutions. Here we go on fourth. Watson. This is caught. And the Browns are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. 
We always talk about big-time players make big-time plays and big-time moments. I think that fourth down qualified. That was a heck of a throw. From the two, here's first and goal. Chubb. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. He'll get two out of that run, and it's going to bring up a second and goal. Good work there, holding them out on first down. And this is going to be a battle down here on the goal line. Can they hold their ground for two, maybe even three more plays? Hunt. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. And now third and goal coming up, the loss on second down. That just means this crowd's going to get even louder, and they'll get a little bit of extra help from the defenders as they exhort them to join them in the effort. On third and short, going with their tight end. Boy, no chance as he was met and dropped behind the line there. Nothing doing there as the 13th play of the drive proves to be unlucky. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because, let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. York able to send this one through. So a long drive gets him down inside the five, but ultimately they settle for just the field goal. And I have to think that if maybe they were a yard closer, that would have made their decision tougher, and I think they likely would have gone for it. But in this situation, they just decided to take the three, and I think it was a smart move. ready and here we go as he sends this one away this will be fielded inside the five and able to get this out to the 25 the Texans offense set to regain possession this one a little slow to get cooking just a three nothing score line as they begin with a first and ten A first carry now for Rex Burkhead. And some room to maneuver. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. Not too shabby for his first carry of the game. That's exactly what most teams are looking for, a really good change of pace back. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Now Allen. Cooks on the quick slant. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, you often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. On play action, Allen rolling to his left. That's caught. It's Chris Moore. And he'll be dropped just shy of the 35 at the 34. A pickup of 17 on a play that originated at the 17. Well, this is an awfully tough route to defend in man coverage because he lines up on the right and then runs a crossing route back to the other side of the field. So as a defender, you're not only trailing him the whole way, you're also looking out for your own guys to make sure you don't get yourself picked off. And then you can't catch up in time to prevent the completion. Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa. Big impact play, a tackle for loss. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big time play for their defense. A second down run for Burkhead. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. 
Call it no gain there, and now they're looking at a third and 13. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. Problems on third down so far in this first half. Relatively small sample size, but they're now 0 for 3. And the average in the league, somewhere around 40% on third down for offenses. So what's the answer to this? Either convert them or don't get to third down in the first place. Get your big chunks of yards on first and second down. And that is no good. And instead of tying it up, they'll remain down by three. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. So the long field goal misses, and now the reverse. You're in a tough spot defensively. They'll start the drive at the 43. Now a throw here going to be taken in by the tight end to Joku. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. But give them credit for a good read right there because they read the man coverage on the right side and sent the tight end a few steps down the field and then angled him to the left on a crossing route. He was able to get enough separation on this play to turn it into a nice game. A give running right is Chubb. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Running with Hunt here out of the shotgun. Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Here's Watson. They'll go screen here to Hunt. And this will not be enough. On third and five, he only gets three. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with a little game. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Running for it. Here's Chubb. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. On first down, Watson. And that's going to be caught by Peoples-Jones. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting them in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. On first down, it's Watson. Swings this out for Hunt. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. To throw again on second down. Watson to the goal line, but it's incomplete. I know every offense wants to start their snaps closer to the goal line. But it's actually harder to throw the ball in those situations. You throw that tight coverage. You see what happens. Hard to get the ball in there. Not enough space there. Lucky maybe that it wasn't intercepted. Ninth play coming up here on this drive. This is third and a yard. Watson now to throw. And this is caught. Touchdown, Cleveland. 
Donovan Peoples-Jones from three yards out. And the Browns will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. And that's certainly an important score right there because they gave themselves a two-score cushion heading towards halftime. Now you got to force the other team out of their comfort zone, and it changes the way you approach the second half as well. How you want to do things on offense, and your defense feels much better too, having that lead. York ready, and here we go as he sends this one away. From the six. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. The Texans with the football here late in this first half. And Charles, you're down multiple scores, less than a minute left here. But with that deficit, they've got to try to at least work their way into field goal range to try to muster something out of this drive. And I'm going to go ahead and date myself one more time because I'm going to quote an old Smokey and the Bandit lyric. They've got a long way to go and a short time to get there. But they still have time to get it done. So I'm looking forward to watching them mount this drive and see if they can get some points out of it. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. The Texans with the football here late in this first half. They're certainly in need of some kind of points here before the end of the half. A field goal or something being shut out right now. They could really use some momentum before they head into halftime. Looking to throw again on second down. Allen. They're going for Howard, but the pass intercepted. Grady Williams picks it off. After the interception, here's Watson. Throw left side. There's Schwartz with it. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that's going to bring up second down. Now Watson. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they get it right at the 32nd mark of this first half. Great starting position to begin the drive, but now they look up at a third and five. Now it's Watson. And avoids the contact by sliding. Now a second timeout called for by the defense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Watson will step away, and out comes Cade York to handle this fourth down field goal try for the Browns. York able to send this one through, and that will extend their lead even further. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you give the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense, the fireman. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. Let's go, 
York ready, and here we go as he sends this one away. From the six. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. And the Texans going to get the football one final time here in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And defensively, they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. The Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 13 seconds to play in half number one. And the Texans going to get the football one final time here in this first half as they'll take over with just 13 seconds to go before the break. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. To the air, Allen. That's complete to his running back, Burkhead. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. So we come upon halftime, and it's the visiting Browns with the lead. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. The Texans down on the scoreboard, but they do get the first crack here as we are back underway in the second half. And the tackle going to be made right there at the 25-yard line. And the Texans getting ready to go here to begin the third quarter. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively. Virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. And Pierce gets it again on second down. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. Well, they still have time to get him established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. A third down now. Those last two plays indicative of how things have gone for them. Just nowhere to go on the ground and struggling to put up points. Trying to lay one up deep. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. Good clean play. No flags coming out of the pocket of the officials. Turns into an incompletion, and that should get him off the field with a three and out. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he's on to punt for Houston. Good coverage there holds him to just a two-yard return following a punt of 44. And out will come the offense as they take over. Watson and the Browns now with a first and 10 at their own 26. Here's Watson. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. Nice work to get seven out of that, and it's second down. Well, it looked like a quick hitter, a three-step drop, but when it's not there, what do you do? He elects to try and escape through the mass of bodies up the middle, and he does so and picks up positive yardage. Throwing again on second down, Watson. Dumps this to his running back, Chubb. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. 
Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. They run it again with Chubb. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. 44 yards on the ground for him now on nine carries. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time and making it work. Here's Chubb on the read option. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Handoff up the middle, Hunt. And a loose football, and the Texans scoop it. Well, you had an offense working with a comfortable two-score lead here in the third quarter and certainly doesn't feel as comfortable now following the turnover. Yeah, you're right about that because now the nerves start to come into play a little bit. You're a little bit jangled. You don't want to give your opponents any avenues to get back into the game. What you'd rather do, put up signs and say, roads closed. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Now a dump off here complete, and down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. To throw, it's Allen. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they like some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. That one sails out of bounds. A side judge will walk it off. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. Let's go old school there. That's absolutely a great coffin corner punt. Someone's put some time in working on yeah, that. It seems it? like every year these guys get better and better. It's amazing how they can command that football through the air. Yeah, they used to actually practice with hula hoops where they place them and try and put them there. Now a lot of guys use barrels on the sidelines to try and put the football in one. Watson's throw taken in by Cooper here. And he gets it to the 30 when it's all said and done. An ideal beginning of the drive there as they'll get 20 and a first down. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Again, it's Cooper as he makes the catch. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 13 yards as they've got the connection working. His second catch in a row, first down. Watson. And just not enough on the throw there. Down around his feet and incomplete. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. Second and ten. Thanks for tagging along with us here from Houston, Texas. Out of the gun, Watson. He's going to drop this one down for Chubb. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans 43. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. 
And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him without weakening our overall defense? You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. More muscle up front for this second and two. They've got three tight ends out there. Chubb will get the call running left. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. They'll run for it. Here's Chubb. Well, this is not going to be enough. Was in search of two yards and only got halfway there. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball in this drive, and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play. Stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally, because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. They'll run for it. Chubb. And I'm not sure he got there. Did they stop him? They did. Well, they got the ball already. They're not going to risk the yardage and running another fourth down. They decline it. And what was that they taught you in law school, that possession is nine-tenths of the law? I didn't go to law school. Oh, you didn't? I thought you did. Well, I feel I'm going to <laughs> give that to you anyway. Possession is nine-tenths of the law, and it's nine-tenths of this game, too, having the football counts. You're so litigious. <laughs> Throwing on first down is Allen. Looking left sideline, incomplete. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with a short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. On play action, Allen. toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. Another attempt, another incompletion, and when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long gain or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points, and the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. Throwing is Allen on third. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Miles Garrett drops him for a loss of 10, and it's going to be fourth and long. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense, so he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. Here's Cameron Johnston now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. It'll be a 48-yard punt. Five there on the return. And they will take over first and 10. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team. That Their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Second down at four. They'll go left side on the ground with Chubb. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. This offense so far on third down, not so hot. Two for nine to this point. They're up against a third and one situation. To the left side and complete for Amari Cooper. 
And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. So much for the run on third and one. Instead, it's a big chunk in the pass game. First down. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. On first down, Chubb able to get forward for about four as he's taken down. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. That's some strong running there as he's down just shy of the 20 on the edge of the red zone. 42 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Deshaun Watson. A 21-yard touchdown run. And the Browns have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter. And maybe the defense got so caught up in him throwing the football, they forgot he can take off, too. And you often hear about the quarterback being the unaccounted-for guy as a runner. Well, even on a passing... And he's going to be taken down. It's a sack, and they fail on a try for two. New York ready, and here we go as he sends this one away. And Smith not going to bring it out, so it's a touchback. Houston set to take over. At this point, partner, things looking pretty bleak. They still haven't scored here in the fourth quarter, facing the big deficit. I just well, Silver linings, what can they look to do here offensively? You know, it's funny. I talked about this with a coach in the offseason and kind of had this scenario like what feels good to you and what feels good to your team. You're down big. You really have like one possession left and you're trying to put points on the board that don't matter. But do they? And he told me they actually do matter. And in this situation, he's going to try and run the best offense he can run to have at least a little bit of confidence to take away from that game. So right now, they're going to try their best to get something up on the board and not get shut out. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Allen. This is caught. It's Cooks. And he has a big gain inside the 40 before being dropped. Getting it to him in space pays off big time. That winds up going for 31. At this stage, there's nothing left to do but to keep firing. And if you're a play caller, you may go off your sheet and use some things maybe you hadn't planned to in this game. Maybe that was one of them there that worked. Allen now on first down. And his throw here is incomplete. Well, it just seems like all game long there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. And again, it's Allen. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And unable to connect. Incomplete. 
Uh, give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. Too many zeros on the stat sheet thus far. No touchdown passes, no points for his team, but he remains undaunted. Still attempting to get his team on the scoreboard, firing the ball downfield. Now Allen, got to have this one. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Texans tried it, but they come up empty here on fourth. And this Browns defense stands tall. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the incompletion. So on their record, that goes down as a successful play. It doesn't matter how they got there, how it happened. They got it done. They're the ones that are jubilant. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. He'll take it past the 40 to the 41, second down. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Second down, here's Chubb again. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. A yard in the wrong direction makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And, and the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB. Oh, Chubb fumbled it. Wow. That ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. The Browns send out their punter now as he's on to kick it away. It's a 44-yard punt, just three on the return. And the Texans will take over with a first and ten. The Houston's offense taking over again. I hate to say it, but at this point, I don't really know that they're playing to win with this deficit in the fourth quarter. They're just trying to erase that zero on the scoreboard, Charles, and get some type of momentum to carry into the film session tomorrow. If you get any type of points on the board, it'll count as a moral victory, although no one will talk about that in the post-game press conference. That's not something you mentioned in the NFL. And this loss, it already stings and will for a while, but everyone on that offense knows it'll sting a lot worse if they don't put some points up on the board. 16 yards right off the bat and a first down. Well, those are the types of plays they probably wish they had made more of in the first three quarters. And this deficit is going to be tough to overcome here in the fourth. But a nice first down and a pickup on that throw. Yeah, and this is where as coaches, you're looking for effort and execution, even though the scoreboard is going against you. You want to find out who's going to fight, who's going to scrap, who's going to keep their heads up and continue to play. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. Throwing again on second and ten. Allen, he finds his tight end, Howard. That's complete. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. You got the big lead defensively. Willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch. Inbounds. Keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. The offense on third down. As bad as you can be. 0 for 7 thus far. This is third and four. He'll get this into the hands of Nico Collins. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 45-yard line. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. A three-score game here late. You can probably rule out the comeback, but certainly some kind of a moral victory to be had if they can get a few more points to close things out. And to that end, a nice pass play there to push things downfield. Yeah, and we know in this league... A loss is a loss, and no one wants anything to count as a moral victory or, boy, something that feels a little bit cheap. But if they trim that lead down to just two scores, that's still a benefit to this squad. 
And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they're in a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. We've seen that the deep ball's been a part of their game plan all afternoon, but they've had trouble hooking up on it, unable to successfully find the end zone over the top. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. Again, they'll throw with Allen. It's caught left side by Cooks. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns 17-yard line. That gain on third down, good for 28. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. First down, and they're going to throw with Allen. Throwing middle, and it's complete. And the Texans are going to have a first and goal as he'll be taken down at the seven-yard line. Nice game there, partner, but you and I both know that won't do anything for the final score. They're not going to win this one. Right now, they're playing for pride and fantasy points. <laughs> and just to erase that goose egg, nobody wants to be shut out. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. Now Allen. Toward the back corner of the end zone, but he could not get the feet down. This will wind up incomplete. Uh, defensively, you look at the numbers. Another incomplete pass that we just saw, and they're under 200 yards passing for the game, so they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200-yard game, and that was a big talk both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game? Touchdown, Texans! Brandon Cooks, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Texans are finally on the board here in the fourth quarter. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope. When they had to slog their way downfield, they got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah, yeah you know. It doesn't you kinda, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> So two scores down, time definitely not an ally, but here comes the onside kick. And the Browns were able to cover this one up. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Cleveland offense making their way out. And checking the timeouts. They do have two defensively, but no real need to use them as they're not going to be able to stop the clock after that. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. 
And again, it's Chubb. And he'll take this one down to about the 40. Now a second timeout called for by the defense as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. The Texans here on third down, putting an extra defender in the secondary. Handoff comes to Chubb. And he is going to have the first down, and that is going to suck the life right out of this crowd. The Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout, and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. The Browns in victory formation now as they take the knee. Down to Anigos Watson, and that should just about do it for this ball game. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something, and they, <laughs> they did in this one. So Cleveland able to come away with the victory here. And it was her defense that really paved the way to this victory as they allowed the one touchdown, and that was all she wrote. Almost want to do the defense chant right now, right? Defense with a couple of claps in there, but no one wants to hear that from me. Let's just talk about how they got it done, though. When you take care of every aspect of the game, shut down the run, control the airways, right? Make sure the quarterback is harassed. This type of performance you get. They can't fashion together any offense, no consistency, and they just took control.